And we'll go to the last one here. And this is a little bit different because we're going to use a shadow catcher on this one. Because I, I know the sun is coming from the left. See the shadows here falling on the ground? We have sun coming from the left, and I want to simulate that there are some shadows here. So it would be weird for the text to be floating up against the vines without having some shadows falling on them. And this gets a little tricky. And um, the last time I did it, the shadows didn't behave properly. They remained sharp. I'm not sure why that is. So we'll see if they stay sharp this time or not. Click on this to make it active. I've already tracked it. There's the camera tracker. And you can barely see the little guys. The targets are okay, but the little spots are barely visible. So I'm going to make them more visible by increasing the size of the track point. The reason the target's large is because I've already made it large. If I take it back down 100%, click on that 100, you'll barely see the target too. It's somewhere down there, right? So we'll make these guys both large by just dragging them, pressing the shift. As I drag, it makes it drag faster. Make the targets bigger. Ah, there we go. Now you can see them. Close to the camera, they're big. Farther away, they're smaller. I want to get something that kind of skews down the aisle here. Not easy to do necessarily. That's a good one. Click on that. Right click. And I want to first create a shadow catcher, camera, and light. Okay. And a shadow catcher is a solid layer that has, has material options. Because it's in 3D, you can have material options. And the material option regarding shadows is that it receives shadows only. So it's transparent, but shows shadows. That's how shadow catchers work. So it's just a solid layer where, the, um, where it's been changed such that it receives shadows only. We've used those before when we wanted to simulate putting a shadow in a, in a 2D scene. We just created a solid layer, rolled it back a little bit ways for the shadow to fall on it, and then just had it be shadow only. So it's the same process we've used before. It's not some magical thing. It's just a solid layer with the, uh, with the option for shadows to be shadow only. Now I'm going to click on this again, right-click on it again, and say Create Text. So there's text there, and light, and uh, shadow catcher. Now, the weird thing about working with shadow catchers and the lights is that uh, it's hard sometimes to find the darn light and, and then adjust it to make it work the way you want it to. And also notice the text came up black. The reason it came up black is because the light's not shining on the text properly. It's, it's kind of in some place where the text is not being illuminated by the light. Weird. But that's one of the little things about working with a 3D camera tracker. So. The way you resolve that is by moving the light right on top of the text and then start moving it away so you can see it better. So the way I do that is I go to text and I go to P for position and I click on position. And notice the position is just insane. It's 23,800. That means it's way, way off to the right relative to the scene. And, and 4,000, that means it's, it's just so far away from wherever you expect it to be. And then a, it's actually 38,000, meaning it's it's so far back in the scene that if we went to the top view, we wouldn't even find it. So it's a long ways away, but the camera sees it. That's what's important. All right, so I want to click on position, Control or Command C to copy it. Go to the light, Control or Command V, and it puts the light. Now you can see the little reticule there. You can barely see it probably, but that's the light right there on top of the text. I'll zoom in a bit by pressing the period key, and we'll press one more time, space bar, and that is the light right there. All right, now we can play with the position a little bit. So I go to light, press P for position, and I want to move it to the left. So I do it like this. Hopefully we'll begin to see the text shining up a little bit, see how it's working there. And I want to lift it up a little bit, like so. Oops, I just grabbed the entire scene. I don't want to do that. I want to grab the light instead. Come on. There we go. That should do it. So we're lifting the light up a little bit at a time. It's a big numbers here, so I can... Try to lift up a little bit more by actually making the numbers smaller that lifts things up in the XYZ world here. I can pull it a little bit left again. And now it's shining on the text. And actually, I don't want it to shine on the text. We'll deal with that later. I just want the text to be white. But now, where's the shadow catcher? Well, the shadow catcher is located in the same place as the text is. So you can't see the shadow catcher, but if I slide it this way, now you can see the shadow catcher beginning to show up. Right, I'll pull back a little bit so you can see it all. Shift forward slash. That's why it's important to put things all in the same place. You can begin to see them all. And now, the sh what is the shadow catcher? Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to open this up here and press AA for the material options. And here it says, accept shadows only. That's the trick here. I'm going to make it so it just is accepting shadows on. And now you can see the whole, that's the solid thing right there. So you want it to be big enough so it can actually be big enough to catch all the text there behind it. And you also want to move it such that it's not smacked up against the text. So I'm going to 
drag it back a little bit to the left like that. Oops, drag the scene instead of the text. I want to get the shadow catcher, make you active. Try that again. Darn it. It's not cooperating. I need to get the shadow catcher and press P for position because I keep on grabbing the entire scene instead of it. So I'm going to move it left like this. It still wants to. Oh, I see why because I got both of them selected. That's the problem. Now I feel better. Okay, now we got it. There we go. I can see the shadow catcher moving there. You see that it gets bigger the farther away you go because it's showing the shadow off in the distance. You need to scale it up a bit, so I press S for scale. And we'll scale it up so you can see it. I just need to scale this direction, so I'm going to break it. Break the link here. Pull this thing toward me a bit. If I want to make the X value higher. And I can slide it around in space using the anchor point again. So I press A for anchor. It's not critical, but you can see that I want to slide it in space like this. to Make sure it's kind of centered up over the text. So you can see how it works now. And I'm going to take the light and lift the light up so that it's not so that the text shadow is not directly behind it. So I go to the lights and I'm going to lift it up. So that means I take the Y value and take it down, which is weird, right? But there's the light going up and there's the, the shadow going down. All right. And I'm going to go to the text and go to its material values and turn off the ability for it to receive light because I don't want it to do that. I just want it to be white. So AA for the text. It says uh, accepts lights. I'm going to turn it off. I just want it to be white. All right, and now I want the shadow to be diffuse, which it's not here, it's sharp. And this is where things got weird last time. I'm going to double click on the lights. And you notice that the shadow diffusion is zero, and the shadow darkness is 100%. Let's see if it works this time. I'm going to take shadow diffusion and make it up higher. Oh, look, that's not working. Isn't that weird? Something is, and now it's working. Maybe it's, it's like, click OK, you're going to work? No, it got sharp again. Something is going wrong here with that darn thing, which is troublesome. Not sure why that is. I don't know why, but it looks like it's working fine until I click OK. It says Preview, right? I click OK, and then it goes back to being sharp again. So some kind of little bug is going on here, or I'm missing something. I don't know what it is. It's been troubling me, but I'm doing the things that I should be doing to get it to be diffuse. You notice if I change it at all, it shows it here as under the preview as doing what I want it to do. But it's not working. I'll take the intensity down a little bit, maybe. But see, it seems to be working fine, but I click OK, and it's not. So I don't know why. We'll just let it go for now. And I'm going to go down to the Shadow Catcher, and I want it to be only shadow only, right? So I go back down here and press AA for the material options. And I'm going to go to Accept Shadows to be only. So now the shadow's there. And I think that it could be a little bit closer to the text. It doesn't have to be quite so far back. So I press P for position again. And I'm going to take the, uh, the what is it? Z value, I think. Let's see if that's the one. And bring it a little bit closer to the text, like so. Like that. Yeah, the Z value, pull it toward it like that. And I could make the text a little bit larger. I could change the text. I could rotate it a little bit. It's not quite what I want, but I just want to show you how this works, basically, that you can add these things to the scene like this. Let me just do a little bit of work on the text. I'll double click on it. I'll type uh, Pinot Noir. We're really big on wine here in Sonoma County. And we'll uh, press R. Not that I am a big wine drinker, but the, the county is famous for it anyways. And you can see it's kind of lining up in there, and it's going to fall off the edge of the shadow catcher now. We'll deal with that in a second. I'm going to rotate it a little bit on the Y axis. So it kind of goes up against the grapes a little bit, the vineyard a little bit better. Press A for anchor point and slide it along the anchor point a little bit, like so. Pull it down a little bit. Like that, there we go. And uh, the shadow catcher, if I, <coughs> excuse me, the shadow catcher is now off the edge. You really can't tell, so I'm going to go back to the shadow catcher, AA for it. Uh, turn the uh, accept shadows back on again so you can see it again, so you can see how big it is. And it's, little, it's kind of rotated into the words. See that? It's not quite aligned with the text in terms of the rotation. So I press R for rotation, and I want it to rotate it on the Y axis a little bit. So it can behave properly like that. Something like that. That's more like it. And uh, we can adjust the position of the light a little bit so that it doesn't run off the right hand side here. However we want to deal with it, but that's how the basic process, process works. I'll go back to scale, and we'll increase the scale to the right here so we can get the shadow catcher to go off the scene. Okay. And back to AA again to turn the thing to just shadows only, like that. And now you can see how that works.